Hello. In this presentation, I'm going to look at the area of business valuations, including an overview of the various methods that can potentially be adopted. Specifically, this presentation will cover introduction and rationale, an overview of valuations, share-based approaches and the EMH, asset-based approaches, dividend-based approaches, earnings-based approaches and cash flow-based approaches. Let's look at each of these in turn. Introduction and rationale. As is discussed in the Financial Management Objectives presentation, one of the decisions that finance managers have to make is the investment decision. As is also covered, one aspect of this is the decision to invest in other companies, i.e. the acquisition of other companies. If this is to happen, the company will need to decide how much the target company is worth, i.e. how much it should pay. This is, however, only one reason why a business valuation may be required. A company may wish to value its own business either because it is the subject of a takeover bid or because they wish to float the company on a stock exchange. An overview of valuations. In many ways there is no such thing as the correct value of a company. Indeed, the only true value is the value that two parties agree on for the transfer of ownership from one party to another. Having said that, as discussed in the introduction above, both companies will need to form an opinion as to the amounts they are willing to pay or accept in order that they can negotiate to a final price. In simple terms, the seller will need to identify the minimum price they are willing to accept and the buyer the maximum they are willing to pay. Assuming the maximum is higher than the minimum, certainly not guaranteed, then somewhere in between the two is a figure at which both parties would be willing to trade. The exact figure within the range will be determined by the relative bargaining power of the two parties. How much the seller wants to sell, how much the buyer wants to buy, etc. We will now look at some of the approaches that the parties might adopt in arriving at a range of valuations that they can negotiate within. Share-based approaches and the EMH. Many companies already have a value in that they have a share price. The company value can then be derived by multiplying the share price by the number of shares in issue. In order for this to be a valid approach, however, the company must be listed, i.e. it must have a share price. The shares must be regularly traded, i.e. the share price must be current. And the market must operate efficiently, i.e. the share price must be adjusted quickly and accurately in the light of new information. Market efficiency is concerned with how quickly and accurately a market interprets available information and updates share prices accordingly. One interpretation of this final aspect is provided by the Efficient Market Hypothesis or EMH. This states that markets operate at one of three levels of efficiency. A weak form efficient market will only consider things that have actually happened, including past share purchases. It will not reflect latest information with regard to expected future performance. As such, the quoted share prices cannot be guaranteed as up to date. A semi-strong form efficient market will include all historic information as described above, however will also include all information that is in the public domain. A strong form efficient market will include all of the above, however 
in addition it will reflect information not in the public domain i.e. that held privately by directors it is difficult to see how this can be achieved in practice an individual investor can outperform the market if they are able to operate at a higher level of efficiency than the market accordingly a weak form market will be beaten by an investor that operates in a semi-strong way in the same way a semi-strong market would be beaten by a strong investor however taking advantage of private information known as insider dealing or insider trading is illegal asset based approaches a company can be valued as the value of its net assets i.e. assets minus liabilities the simplest way to assess this is based on book values however these do not necessarily reflect the amount that would be achieved in a sale as such a realizable value the amount generated from a sale of the assets will provide a more accurate valuation albeit it is more difficult to assess limitations of the asset based approach are it ignores the value of intangible assets and it ignores the fact that the company can be used to produce future profits and cash the asset based approach is likely to produce a valuation towards the bottom of the negotiation range and is only really valid when liquidation is the only other option for the seller dividend based approach the dividend based approach values a company as the present value of the future dividend stream that would be earned if the target company continued under current ownership effectively it is offering equity shareholders a lump sum now that equates to the value of dividends that are expected to be received in the future this approach is most appropriate where a minority shareholding is being valued as it does not include any premium for control for example if a 10% shareholding is worth 10 million pounds you would expect to pay more than 60 million pound for a 60% shareholding due to the control that would be acquired the value can be calculated as the dividend in one year's time divided by the cost of equity of the target company shareholders minus the expected dividend growth rate weaknesses of this approach are it is difficult to estimate the dividend growth rate the model assumes the dividend growth is constant not all companies pay dividends and this model would value such businesses at nil and the model would produce a negative value for an organization where the dividend growth rate is higher than the cost of equity earnings based approach a company can be valued as a multiple of its earnings earnings are the profits that are distributable to equity shareholders and the multiplier is provided by the price earnings or PE ratio the PE ratio is effectively a measure of confidence that the market has in the company in other words it reflects market expectations of growth set against inherent risk levels the valuation is simply the earnings multiplied by the PE ratio however an unlisted company will not have a PE ratio this can be overcome by using an industry average PE ratio or better still using the ratio of a similar company referred to as a proxy that is listed obviously the resultant valuation will be limited to the level of similarity that can be achieved between the target and proxy companies
It is also common practice to reduce the proxy company PE to reflect the difference in status. Adjusting downwards by a third is typical. Cash flow based approach. The final approach involves treating the acquisition of a new company in the same way as any other capital purchase, i.e. estimating the present value of relevant cash flows via an NPV. The cash flows should include any benefits from the acquisition known as synergies. For example, it may be the case that the buyer would move the target staff into its own premises and sell off some of the target's property. Allowance should also be made for the replacement of the non-current assets of the target moving forward. In other words, if the buyer acquires the target and distributes all profits to shareholders, over time the assets of the target will start to wear out and need replacing. Finance will be required to achieve this and the funds that are available to be distributed without jeopardizing this aspect are sometimes referred to as free cash flows. Thank you.